Hello and welcome. I'm Gwen Taylor, Senior Developmental Editor with Current Protocols at John Wiley & Sons, and I'm delighted to introduce today's webinar titled Cancer Stem Cells and Mechanisms of Multidrug Resistance by Flow Cytometry. This webinar is being co-sponsored by Current Protocols and Thermo Fisher Scientific. Thermo Fisher Scientific is the world leader in serving science. Their mission is to enable their customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. They help their customers accelerate life sciences research, solve complex analytical challenges, improve patient diagnostics, and increase laboratory productivity. Through their premier brands, Thermo Scientific, Applied Biosystems, Invitrogen, Fisher Scientific, and Unity Lab Services, they offer an unmatched combination of innovative technology, purchasing convenience, and comprehensive support. Current Protocols is in its 29th year and is the largest collection of peer-reviewed, authoritative, and regularly updated step-by-step -step research protocols available for life scientists worldwide. Now with 18 titles and over 17,000 protocols, Current Protocols is part of Wiley Publishers. During today's program, we encourage you to submit your questions throughout the event by clicking on the Ask a Question box at the bottom of your screen. Your questions will not be seen by any of the other attendees. The webinar will be recorded and available for viewing in the next few days, and we will send you an email with details on how to access the on-demand webinar, along with a customizable certificate of attendance. So now it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker. Dr. Jordi Petris received his BSc degree in biochemistry and animal biology from the University of Barcelona and then pursued his PhD at Barcelona in physiology and immunology, specializing in functional-based mechanisms of multidrug resistance against anti-cancer agents. Since 2000, he has been a member of the Subcommittee on Quality Assessment of hem Hematopoietic Stem Cell Graphs and is a principal investigator at the Josep Carreras Leukemia Research Institute. Dr. Catrice has authored nearly 100 research publications, and his current work focuses on linking stemness with ABC transporters. He is studying several genes involved in different aspects of stem cell activation, including some that, in, that encode for multidrug resistance transporters and others that regulate self renewal and differentiation. He has also been the president of the Iberian Society for Cytometry since 2007. So let's go ahead and get started with a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Patrice. Yeah, thank you very much for this nice introduction. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Wiley and Thermo Fisher uh, for inviting me to participate in this webinar meeting on flow cytometry. And my experience in the flow cytometry field starts in 1991 and my talk will focus on the study of stem cells mainly applied to learn more from the hematopoietic uh, uh, system. My PhD was in the field of functional flow cytometry and multidrug resistance, and most of this knowledge has applied to stem cell studies. Uh, more recently, we have explored the, the effect of cellular hypoxia on gene expression analysis. During this talk, uh, we will see different techniques aimed to identify as well to isolate very rare stem cells in their subpopulations. In fact, uh, C34 stem cells from the hematopoietic system are the best study compartment so far. In this slide, you will can see how the hematopoietic stem cells, which are C34 positives, are able to self-renew and to differentiate into progenitors of all hematopoietic lineages. And these processes are regulated by a large number of cytokines to give rise to red and white cells and platelets. More sensitive measurements of C34 positive events should have an impact on research in a broad range of scientific and clinical disciplines and could also clarify the number of C34 positive cells needed for the engraftment. In this slide, we can see an all eyes, no wash, a flow cytometry technique developed in my lab aimed to study more precisely the absolute number of C34 positive cells in analyzed whole blood that can be applied to cord blood, peripheral blood, bone marrow, and leukophoresis products. As you may know, Flow cytometry is a multiparametric technique and multiple cell characteristics can be studied at a single cell level. 
Some diets allow us exploring the function, such as the mitochondrial membrane potential. In this slide, we can see how the mitochondrial membrane potential of viable C34 positive cells, stained with loramine 1 to 3, helps to distinguish the primitive compartment within the hematopoietic stem cells, with the lowest mitochondrial membrane potential, as these cells are mainly quiescent. In addition, C34 positive and rich cells from human bone marrow can be used for additional immunophenotyping experiments. The composition of C34 uh, positive subpopulation differs between bone marrow, blood, and cord blood. And in this slide, we can see highly enriched C34 positive cells that were stained again with C38, a marker classically used to distinguish the more primitive fractions within the human hematopoietic stem cell compartment. In this slide, we can see a representative C34 positive versus dicycle violet measurement in peripheral blood and marrow cells using flow cytometry. Dicycle violet is a DNA selective and cell membrane permanent stain which effectively subsets and order C34 positive cells for the definition of different functional properties that can be related to the characterization, resolution, and purification of primitive hematopoietic stem cells in combination with a specific use of marker for multicolor flow cytometry measurements. The first that plot on the left displays normal bone marrow and malignant disease of the bone marrow with low C34 expression, acute myeloid leukemia cells on the right. Moreover, we can use a series of monoclonal antibodies against C34 positive subsets, and in this slide we can see C34, C38, and DR positive cells that were sorted and stained with propidium iodide for cell cycle studies, showing that a large number of cells were in the G0G1 phase and the rest near the 15% under proliferation. This slide displays the cell cycle analysis of C34 positive, C34 positive, DR negative assorted cells, showing that almost of cells were quiescent, suggesting a more primitive enrichment of hematopoietic stem cells. And this slide, uh, this, this, and, and at the same time, C34 positive, C30, C30 negative, DR negative sorted cells. Um, show it that most uh, of cells were more quiescent, giving support to the hypothesis that the more primitive compartment is enriched in G0 uh, cells. However, in order to distinguish the G0 from the G1 phase, different studies are needed. In this slide, we can see C34 positive purified cells from peripheral blood that were incubated with H33, 342 for DNA staining and parallel Y for RNA staining. As expected, most of cells are distributed in the G0, G1 uh, fraction, but pyrrhine Y beam cells or RNA low cells are enriched in G0 uh, cells. Thus, the lack of, speci of the specific markers for stem cells makes the physical identification and isolation of this compartment difficult. Since uh, hematopoietic stem cells differ in repopulating and self-renewal potential, we also studied their telomer length by flow fish, showing that C34 positive cells revealed a remarkable telomer length heterogeneity, with a hybridization pattern consistent with different classes of human hematopoietic stem cells, suggesting that cells with large telomeres could be enriched in long-term repopulating cells. However, to complicate the issue, there is experimental evidence demonstrating the existence of cells in the C34 negative population of human bone marrow and cord blood that can, that can repopulate the bone marrow of immunodeficient mice. And clearly, deciding which marrow cell population to select is a crucial and extremely important issue. Uh, magnetic uh, activated cell sorting has been used for large scale positive selection of C34 positive cells. The negative fraction is a convenient source for T cells but is also enriched in C34 negative stem cells. 
Hematopoietic stem cells can be purified uh, based on the efflux of fluorescent dyes such as rhodamine 1 to 3 and HERG 3342. Although expression of ATP binding cassette transporters has been assumed to contribute to dye efflux component of your stem cell compartment, little is known about which transporters are expressed or what function they might be conferring. Nowadays, we know that C34 positive cells mainly express ABCB1, whereas C34 negative stem cells express the ABCG2 transporter. Multidrug resistance has been related to decreased drug accumulation using pharmacological assays. To directly demonstrate this at the single cell level, we incubated ABCB1 EGFP transfectant pools with a fluorescent chemotherapeutic drug, doxorubicin, and visualized the corresponding fluorescent patterns by confocal microscopy. The representative field is shown here to reflect to reflect the inverse relationship between PGP EGFP overexpression, green fluorescence localized in the plasma membrane, and doxorubicin accumulation, nuclear red uh, fluorescence. And this slide, we can see how these transporters contribute to dye flux. In our lab, we have developed ABCG2 transfectants that can be easily monitored by fluorescent techniques and, of course, using flow cytometry. Many drugs are good fluorescent substrates, and these fluorescent substances can intercalate into the DNA and accumulate in the nucleus. This reduced drug accumulation pattern present in the ABCGT2 expressing cells can also be reversed by pre-incubation with some reversal agents, such as uh, verapamil or cyclosporine A. Flow cytometry is increasingly used for quantitation of cellular fluorescent drug retention, drug, drug retention, effect of reversal agents, and for the expression of drug resistance-related cellular surface markers. To achieve optimal growth conditions, cells were seeded before the drug uptake and retention experiments in multi-well tissue culture plates in medium. Uptake of drugs is performed by adding them to the culture medium in the presence or absence either of rapamil or cyclosporine A or other inhibitors. The concentrations of the fluorescent substrates is previously optimized to allow appropriate electronic signal compensation. After one hour of incubation, cells are washed, fed with drug-free culture medium and culture for one hour at 37 degrees centigrade again in the presence or absence of the reversing agents to evaluate their effects on drug retention and monitory monitor it on a flow cytometer. This slide describes the application of multiple substrates to identify drug resistant cells in the green channel, such as rhodamine 1 to 3 or site 13, doxa and downorubicin in the orange channel, or mitochondrin in the far red channel. Optimal staining and concentration should be optimized and combined with immunophenotyping. Gating of viable cells is based on like the scatter parameters and in simultaneous sustaining uh, with propidium iodide or 7AAD. Analysis of 10,000 cells per sample is carried out in the fluorescent count log histogram, collecting the autofluorescent signal in the first decade. Cancer and leukemic cells can simultaneously express different multidrug resistant transporters, which can be easily distinguished by combining fluorescent probes and multidrug reversal agents. Cyclosporine A is generally specific for P glycoprotein and provenicide for ABCC1. By using calcein AM, a molecular probe that can be excluded by these two transporters, Different fluorescent profiles can be observed, indicating that cells can evade anti-cancer treatment consisting of multiple drug combinations. As we can see in this slide, flow cytometry can also be used to monitor drug efflux over time. The stable ABCG2 transfectants were preloaded with mitochondrin, a fluorescent drug that can be excited with red lasers showing that specific transporter mutations consisting of a single amino acid substitution are crucial for changes in the velocity of the transporter, making cells 
more resistant and more to, more resistant to treatment. As you can see here, maximum transport velocity can be easily estimated, and this information can be very helpful for clinicians because will have a special impact on a reduced drug uh, efficacy or effect. Multidrug resistance in human leukemia and lymphoma can also be detected by using monoclonal antibodies such as MRK16 and MRK20. The immature C34 phenotype is strongly linked with the pig lycoprotein. An important advantage of flow cytometry for the detection of multidrug resistant cells seems to be the possibility to identify multiple subsets of hematopoietic cells using lineage-specific or differentiation antigens. Those cells can be separated using positive or negative sorting procedures for gene expression analysis. Here we can see the phylogenetic tree of three human ABC transporter proteins. In this uh, figure, only a part of the human ABC transporter phylogenetic tree is presented showing members of the ABCB, ABCC, ABCG family. The transporters discussed in this webinar are ABCB1, expressed in C34 positive cells, and ABCG2, expressed in C34 negative site population cells. Site population, SP, has become an important hallmark for the definition of the stem cell compartment, especially for the detection of stem cells and for their physical isolation by fluorescence-activated cell sorting. SP cells are C34 negative and were discovered using ultraviolet excitation based on the efflux of H3342 and more recently, a new acid based on the efflux of vibrant dicycle violet stain, DCV, has been documented to discriminate site population cells. Site population displays a unique low H fluorescence emission property, and H low cells are described as site population cells by virtue of their typical profiles in red versus blue vibrant dot plots. Moreover, the degree of reflux activity seems to correlate with the differentiation state. In fact, SP cells showing the highest reflux activity are the most primitive in terms of the differentiation uh, potential. And ABCG2 is the only responsible for the formation of the HCC42 flow cytometric fluorescent profile, and this profile is blocked in the presence of multidrug reversal agents because H reflux is reduced in the presence of fumitramorgine, verapamil, and other drugs. The site population displays a very interesting chromatic shift in the fluorescence. How the chromatic shift occurs is explained by changes in the cellular concentration of H342. As H moves across the cellular membrane because of the ABG, ABCG2 activity, the blue and red fluorescence ratio follows a curve as shown in typical H red versus blue dot plots. In addition, sample manipulation heavily affects the site population resolution and multiple efforts should be addressed towards minimizing the sample processing time. Excess time spent on isolation and preparation of cells can result in suboptimal SP analysis. For this reason, samples should be processed immediately, avoiding density gradients if possible. And there is no doubt that different factors may alter the site population distribution from the TIP to the G0-G1 cluster. As I told previously, it is generally accepted that Dutch low are more primitive site population cells. However, and in many situations, specimens aside for the site population have a low cell number of SP cells showing heterogeneous profiles. We believe that this method can be difficult for most investigators. First of all, because the ability to discriminate site population cells is based on the differential retention of her H dye or dicycle violet dye during a functional assay. Second, because of the difficulties in setting the right experimental conditions. And third, because the analysis of the acquired data requires, requires an extensive expertise on flow cytometry to, to accurately detect the site population events. The prevalence of SP cells is very low, 0.05% of normal whole bone marrow in the mouse, 
and 0.9% in normal human samples. However, it should not be difficult to find the set population if the whole procedure is followed as others as we have described. And here you can see an animation showing the whole staining process from zero to two hours, the time incubation needed to unveil the site population tail in human specimens. And this also shows the whole staining process from zero to two hours, the time incubation needed to unveil the site population in human specimens. Since mutant ABCB1 and other transporters, known or unknown, will be able to efflux switch or dicycle violet, cells clustering within the site population may be wrongly considered as primitive stem cells, especially when such transporters are expressed in cancer and leukemia. Although the identification of the site population is based on Hutch or dicycle violet staining, alternative assays to examine the site population in cancer samples are needed such as co-staining with a monoclonal antibody against the exter external domain of ABCG2. Although we were initially interested in the therapeutic application of SP cells, we moved forward to try to enlighten their role in cancer. Site population cells exist in tumors and could have a cure role in drug resistance and, of course, also be able to evade chemotherapy. And then we look at the site population in cancer samples. In normal hum human bone marrow, the site, po the site population is composed very, of very rare cells, which account for the 0.5% of all nucleated cells, or, or less. And however, in bone marrow preparations from leukemia patients, site population cells can be found in large numbers, up to the 15% and more. Uh, here we can see the site population pattern of Hutch efflux in the bone marrow of a patient with acute myeloid leukemia at diagnosis. The site population contains increased levels of site population cells from high to low fluorescence, giving duplicated SP tails and SP profiles. And in this slide, we can see the DNA content through high resolution cell cycle analysis corresponding to the same patient diagnosis with AML, showing a secondary tetraploid subpopulation as, calcul as calculated from the linear relationship between DNA content and propoidium iodide fluorescence. From our experience, circulating SP cells are unusually detectable, detectable in peripheral blood. And in this slide, we can report the only patient we have observed with circulating SP cells in peripheral blood, showing that only uh, 11 SP cells from a total of 100,000 cells in the sample aberrantly express the C34 antigen, suggesting that they could have a key role in sustaining leukemic cells. Uh, the mechanism underlying drug resistance are still poorly understood, but various stem uh, cells often express higher level of drug resistance proteins such as ABCG2 and ABCB1 uh, transporters. Augmenting levels of these uh, in cancer stem cells may contribute to the refractoriness of metastatic cancer to chemotherapy and should be considered as new target for drugs. Then we went back to our animal models trying to identify site population cells in human prostate cancers. However, all the efforts to detect site population cells in these tumors were unsuccessful. But surprisingly, the analysis of mice bone marrow cells obtained by flushing the ephemera showed cellular types not present in normal bone marrow. In this slide, we can see the different cell morphology in primary bone marrow cultures. And in order to identify these cells, then we prepared cytospins or cytocentrifugations that were incubated with a human anticytocarotene neck and analyzed by fluorescence microscopy, showing that the observed abnormal cells were human infiltrating uh, cells. Moreover, then we resorted to analyze uh, normal mice bone marrow samples using the site population assay as well as bone marrow cell from xenografts, showing that almost if not all human infiltrating cells 
were site population cells, suggesting that SP cells may have a key role in bone marrow infiltration and that bone marrow could be also the reservoir for tumor SP cells. More recently, we are trying to unveil the site population compartment and we are performing a series of experiment, experiments aimed to analyze the microRNA expression profile in SP cells. A large number of microRNAs, up to 108, seems to be heavily correlated in site population cells and we hope to identify new candidate microRNAs that could play a key role to explain the complex biology of these cells. In addition, we have moved forward uh, more ambitiously to study the site population compartment, and we are performing a series of experiments aimed to analyze the gene expression profile in SP cells. A large number of cells, up to 15,000, are all expressed in SP cells, and we hope to identify new candidate genes, genes that could play a key role to explain the complex biology of these cells. In this slide is displayed the gene expression profile of primary tumor cells under hypoxic and normoxic conditions. And the next one displays the gene expression profile of site population cells isolated by means of cell sorting from primary cells. For gene expression studies, primary cells are stained with Hutch as described. And keep in mind that site population cells can be initially detected in low numbers in a small percentage, less than 1% prior to cell sorting experiments. Subsequently, cells can be resorted to obtain enriched cell cultures inside population cells up to 80%. For gene expression profiling comparisons, the same number of site population and non-site population cells should be sorted. In this slide, data from two representative experiments are reported as the mean of triplicate determination plus minus standard deviation. Real-time PCR of mRNA from human astrocytoma cells and gliomas using specific primers for ABCG2, ESMO, and PATCH in unselected cells is compared with the following slide. Showing the same analysis in the site population isolated from the same cells. ABCG2 was inversely expressed when compared with ESMO and SPATCH, lending support to the hypothesis that ABCG2 regulates small levels, whereas the decline in the expression of PATCH may represent a compensatory mechanism as a result of ESMO downregulation. The relative numbers of initially detected SP cells ranged from near zero to the 3% of the PI propidium iodide negative cells within the life gate. Subsequently, cells were sorted to obtain enriched products in SP cells, ranging from 40 to 80%. Accordingly, for the enrichment or purification of SP cells, a representative experiment using human membrane astrocytoma cells is shown. SP cells were initially detected in low numbers in a small percentage, less than 1%, prior to cell sorting experiments. Isolated SP cells were cultured for two weeks following sorting under the same conditions as unsorted cells, giving approximately 5% of SP cells. Sorted cells were cultured again for two weeks, giving approximately 30% of FP cells, and then we resorted to the same um, experimentation to obtain highly purified uh, uh, concentration uh, of products with SP cells. For competitive experiments using cyclopamian, SP cells were sorted again. Only cell cultures with a minimum of 40% of SP cells were prepared in order to study the effect of cyclopamine and temozolamide on H. Uptake. The significant decrease of SP cells was a consequence of adding cyclopamine, whereas temozolamide had no effect on H reflux, indicating that the decrease in the site population cells was not a consequence of the depletion of the site population compartment, but also a direct consequence of the molecular mechanisms involved in the affinity of the cyclopamine and H dye for ABCG transporter.
Hedgehog uh, signaling uh, plays a role in many processes during, uh, during embryonic uh, development and remains active in the adult where it is involved in the maintenance of the stem cell compartment and, and, and also in the stem cell populations. Aberrant hedgehog signaling in some cases can lead to certain forms of cancer and in the absence of ligand, patch represses a small preventing the activation of Hedgecock signaling. In the presence of Hedgecock, uh, the inhibitory effects of patch on SMO are relieved and SMO becomes phosphorylated and GLI enters the nucleus to induce the transcription of Hedgecock target uh, genes, as you can see in this animation. In summary, patch, SMO, and GLI have been identified in hedgehog signaling cascade, playing a key role in the control of stem cell proliferation. Moreover, aberrant aberration of the hedgehog pathway has been associated with different cancers. Here, we propose a model for hedgehog regulation in light of our data with the unexpected role of ABCG2. SMO activity can be modulated by synthetic molecules, such as cyclopamine and endogenous uh, metabolites. Our results suggest that ABCG2 is directly acting as a firewall on ESMO and may be also acting on other potential targets involved in a hedgehog signaling cascade, preventing their binding in a concentration-dependent manner and adding more complexity to hedgehog uh, regulation. And for additional information and for more details, on stem cells use and functional drug resistant non-analysis, please kindly consult it at the current protocol in cytometry. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have uh, any questions, uh, any further questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you very much. All right, well, thank you so much, Dr. Patrice. So let's go ahead now to the question and answer segment. So if you haven't yet submitted a question for Dr. Patrice, now is the time to do so by clicking on the Ask a Question box at the bottom of your screen. So let's go ahead and see what questions have come in so far. Dr. Patrice, you ready to go? Yeah, uh, I would like to thank you again for your attention and for your nice introduction, of course. All right. All right, our first question. Um, is the side population necessary or sufficient for a cancer stem cell phenotype? Mm, okay, thank you very much for, for this interesting uh, question. Although side population can be enriched in, in cancer stem cells or cancer stem, stem like uh, cells, this is uh, most necessary to confer a cancer stem cell phenotype. Um, I'm sorry, this is not necessary to confer. A cancer stem cell phenotype. SP cells also represent, are present in, in normal tissues, tissues, and cancers originated in these locations can of express the ABCG to transporter without need to give rise to, to cancer stem cells. Cancer stem cells are, are not all, all the same, and uh, one another important implication is that cancer stem cells are, are closely related to normal stem cells. Okay, on to the next question then. Um, is dye exclusion the only technique that can be used to detect the SP cells? Oh, yeah, this is uh, also a very nice question. Uh, dye, dye exclusion is, is the only available technique to identify site population um, cells. The Hodge dye is, is used in combination with ultraviolet excitation, and disocyl violet vibrant stain is used in combination with uh, violet excitation at uh, 405 uh, nanometers. In addition, uh, and, and to confirm that we are looking at the ABCG2 ABCG function, reversal inhibitors such as fumitremergency should be used. And moreover, we can confirm that we are looking at the ABCG2 phenotype by using monoclonal antibodies against the external domains uh, of this transporter. Okay, on to the next question. Um, is there any physiological function for ABCG2 in normal stem cells? 
Oh yes, yes. ABCG2 uh, protects the uh, cells against uh, xenobiotic agents and other toxic uh, compounds. In in tumor cells, ABCG2 transporter will protect against anti-cancer uh, agents. But in normal hematopoietic stem cells, ABCG2 acts as a hematopoietic repressor uh, with fundamental regulator abilities key to maintain the stem the stemness of this compartment. Okay, on to the next question. Uh, does the side population drive human malignancies? Mm, well, uh, the idea that, that, that cancer is primarily driving uh, by a small population of stem cells have important implications. However, uh, SP cells are not driving cell, all cell human, um, all human malignancies, and, and cancer stem cells uh, can lack the SP uh, phenotype and uh, they will also have the ability to drive uh, other human malignancies instead the, the site population, of course. Okay, our next question. Uh, does the ABCG2 transfection drive or confer the SP phenotype? Hmm, this is a, a frequent uh, question uh, from the audience in, in my different talks uh, because uh, ABCG2 a, a, ABC transfection will confer a multidrug resistance uh, phenotype and this function will protect uh, target cells against uh, multiple chemotherapy uh, drugs but uh, will never confer the will never will never confer the stem cell phenotype as additional features are needed to give rise to stem cells such as uh, reprogramming and, and some other epigenetic factors okay um we seem to have um answered the questions that the yeah. audience has asked. So I mm -hmm. think it's now time to wrap up the question and answer session. Okay. So I'd like everyone to know that today's webinar has been recorded and it will be available for viewing in the next few days. We will send you an email with details on how to access the recorded webinar along with instructions on how to personalize and print a certificate of attendance as well as a PDF of the slides. So, on behalf of today's speaker, Dr. Jordi Patrice, and our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, we appreciate your attending today's webinar, and we look forward to your attendance at future events from current okay. protocols. Okay. Thank you again to all of you.